I think it was in 1996 when we had uh, my first daughter. Um, there was a problem in the church as a worker and the pastor resigned, wanted to start his own ministry and announced to the church that he handed over the church to me. And um, that's how I became a pastor. And I've started past I've continued to pastor since then. Yeah, I've been pastoring for over 27 years. That's from 1996 to date. Growing up was normal and um, I've always been, uh, I've followed my mom to church as a young girl. And um, growing up, I didn't really plan to be a pastor, but uh, being born again, I planned to marry somebody that is genuinely born again and loves God. And by God's grace and faith in Christ, I'm married to a pastor and happily married. Chapel was started September, the first weekend in September 2006. And uh, the reason why it was Gatineau was because um, when I moved into Orawa, uh, the then uh, Zona pastor, who is now the country coordinator, uh, called me that they've tried to start a church twice in Gatineau and it has failed and because he felt that I'm coming from, Ni uh, from Nigeria, I, I love prayer and I'm experienced as a pastor, wanted me to go and give it a try. So he gave me a family to translate for me and um, that's how we started the Chapel de la Resurrection. Yeah, the name Chapel de la Resurrection came about because in Redemption of God, if you want to start a parish, it is the senior pastor that will give it a name. So my senior pastor then was Pastor Femi Olawali, now the country coordinator, uh, was the one that gave it a name because he felt that twice the church has failed and um, this is an opportunity to resurrect the church again. So it says the Chapel de la Resurrection, that the Chapel of Resurrection, so we translate it into French, Chapel de la Resurrection. Well, drawing the balance between family work and ministry is actually by the grace of God. And um, God has given me the strength to, um, to balance everything together without anyone suffering for the other. So the ministry is key, number one, with God. And then for the family comes second, and the work is the third. As, as I've said earlier on that, um, I have not been to Gatineau when um, I was driven across the river and asked to start the church. So I didn't know anywhere. So it was the senior pastor that got the uh, the hall we were supposed to use in uh, in Gatno, but by the time we came for the first Sunday, uh, the hall we were locked out because um, invariably the hall they changed their mind that they are not going to take a church. It was later we found out that there was a church there that make sure that there's no they don't take an, a, another church. So we had to meet under a tree in front of the hall with all the children and the family that we met. The, that, that we met in Gatno, and my, my translator, interpreter, we, and the family, we had to meet under a tree in front of the hall for that Sunday service. Yeah, pastoring is, um, I, I was just telling a family today, it's, it's the only job I can do for free. I derive joy in helping people. So you must have the heart of a servant to serve people before you can say you want to be a pastor. And um, I see it as 
um, a priority in my own life. Even while I was pursuing my career, even in Nigeria or here, I see pastoring as a priority. I, it's, it's, it's my first priority, and that's God. The work of God is my first priority. Then second is the family. Then third is my work. And I think it has worked for me over the years that I've been pastoring. And that's why I don't get tired of doing this, because I enjoy it, helping people. When you see people, you know, coming up from nothing to be something, it, it brings you joy. Um, in the early days of ministry, when the, kids are young. the mm -hmm. children were very young, very, very young. And, um, as, a, and as a teacher, um, I have all my evenings to myself, so I have to balance the church and spending time with the children. So I had to create time with the children and then I now move my meetings to make sure that when I'm at the meeting, there's somebody responsible. And fortunately for me, my mom, the in-law was with me. So it wasn't that challenging, so to say. But I made the children priority and I had lots of time as a teacher, so. Yeah. I think God is taking us to higher heights. Um, five years ago, none of us thought we would be here. And the next future is in the hands of the Almighty. And I know, but I, one thing I can assure you that it's going to be great. Um, my advice for women who desire to be pastor's wife is that first and foremost, they need to create time to be with God in prayers because it has its own challenges but by the grace of God you are able to be a pastor's wife and do it joyfully and that's one important thing that as a pastor's wife you do you serve others with joy Uh, in terms of resources, the Lord has been so faithful to us. He has made provision for us. I think the most important resources that we need is just people with a willing heart to serve. Because there are a lot of programs we could not do because we don't have volunteers. We don't have workers. And I think that's what we need. If the men that love God, that are willing to serve, we can go places. <laughs>